It's the Wilk Report. I'm Michael Wilk, coming to you from Cleveland, Ohio. Got some uh, news that's a couple of weeks old, but uh, it does have to do with uh, something that you're, you're not going to get all the story. Because, as the title card shows, uh, Chris Hemsworth is set to play uh, a particular member of the wrestling community. Hulk Hogan. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. And uh, let's go ahead and show here. This is dated from uh, February 20th, so yeah, about a month ago. Uh, but yeah, it shows uh, Chris Hemsworth to play Hulk Hogan in a biopic directed by Todd Phillips. This is according to The Hollywood Reporter. Time to eat your vitamins and say your prayers. Hulkamania is going to run wild. Chris Hemsworth is set to portray wrestling superstar Hulk Hogan in a biopic that reunites Todd Phillips with Scott Silver, the respective director and writer of the upcoming DC Comics movie The Joker. John Palano, Stronger, will co-write the script with Silver. Uh, now, this is interesting because... Uh, as reported in GQ, Hulk Hogan is getting the redemption story he never earned. And the biopic won't tell the whole story, and therefore will, will serve no one. Quote, I'm a racist to a point, you know, fucking N-word. But then when it comes to nice people, end quote. That was what Hulk Hogan uttered in 2006 during what he assumed at the time was a private conversation, but only entered the public's consciousness four years ago. He continued, stating, If we're going to fuck with N-words, let's get a rich one. End quote. On Wednesday, it was announced, and this is, a, of course, uh, yeah, February 26th. On Wednesday, it was announced by The Hollywood Reporter that Todd Phillips and Scott Silver, the writer-director duo behind the upcoming Joker film, would be teaming up yet again for a Hulk Hogan biopic. The movie, starring America's favorite Chris Hemsworth, will be produced with Bradley Cooper, Spotlight's Michael Sugar, and prominent wrestling figurehead Eric Bischoff. It's scheduled to be released on Netflix. Hogan himself will reportedly serve as both a consultant and an executive producer. The announcement is just the latest turn of events in the long and weird recent history of Hulk Hogan. For many, Hulk's identity as the world's most popular professional wrestler turned pop culture phenomenon turned reality television star has been supplanted by his sex tape, lawsuit, with gawker, racist remarks, and tone-deaf apology tour. Quote, A lot of people need to realize that you inherit things from your environment. I grew up in South Tampa. It was a rough neighborhood, a very low income. And all my friends, we greeted each other saying that word. The word was just thrown around like it was nothing. End quote, said Hogan during an interview with Good Morning America. For plenty of others, it would seem his early life garnered enough goodwill to look past all that. Uh, and, and this is where I'm going to go on a bit of a rant because, uh, you know, an insincere apology isn't enough. I apologize. No, you don't, Hulk. No, you don't. Say it like you mean it. I apologize. Look, man, I made a mistake. I guess I blew that one. Yes, you did. Hulk, you blew it big time. I was a real horse's ass. Yes, you were. Yes, indeed you were. You were a huge horse's ass. So, let's continue. As a wrestling fan, I'm somewhat... Uh, and this is... Uh, Quoting from the article by Mick, Ru uh, Mick Rouse, or Mick Roos, however you pronounce it, he says, As a wrestling fan, I'm somewhat of an anomaly in that Hulk Hogan has little to no sentimental value to me. When I first started watching WWE programming on television around 1998, Hulk Hogan was wrestling for WCW. By the time he returned to WWE in 2002, I was much more interested in the high-flying daredevil antics of guys like Jeff Hardy and Rob Van Dam. I was always aware of Hulk's of uh, Hogan's ever-looming shadow across the professional wrestling landscape, but having neither witnessed the rise of Hulkamania firsthand, nor the later emergence of Hollywood Hulk Hogan, I had no real attachment to this character. When I heard Hogan's racist remarks for the very first time, I was angry and embarrassed, but I didn't experience the same deep-seated 
uh, deep-seated disappointment felt by the legions who grew up saying their prayers and taking their vitamins. So when the news broke out about this upcoming film, wrestling fans across the world shared in their dismay. Who exactly is this project for then? Professional wrestlers, both real life and fictitious, often make for fascinating film subjects. Mickey Rourke received his lone Oscar nomination for 2008's The Wrestler. HBO and ESPN struck gold with their respective Andre the Giant and Ric Flair documentaries. The Rock and Stephen Merchant's Fighting With My Family about WWE superstar Paige has been receiving high praise from critics in the build-up to its release. Admittedly, Hogan may be the most interesting case study in all of professional wrestling due to his astronomical rise and fall within the pop culture landscape. He is a man who appeared to synthesize so fully with the character he was portraying on screen that entire lines of questioning during his Gawker trial censored on the difference between the two. And, uh, you know, this is another thing in that uh, you know the, the whole lawsuit against Gawker which you know frankly was essentially punishing a, a news outlet for doing its job you know however slimy or uh, skeevy you might think that was the fact of the matter is Hulk Hogan was not divorced from his wife they were separated I think at the time but you know he was also making racist remarks and, you know, when it got out, you know, it was the job of any news publication to report on something that was considered of interest because Hulk Hogan is a public figure and his actions, you know, in public and to an extent in private do reflect on not just him, but the company and the brand he represents. So, you know, you can be outraged all you want about Gawker, but it could have just as easily been another news outlet and the result would still have been the same. So let's go into the Atlantic article here. This is from February 23rd, 2018, titled The Most Expensive Comment in Internet History. A new book pieces together the strange legal saga that was sparked by a 2007 Gawker post outlining the billionaire tech investor Peter Thiel. Balea versus Gawker isn't just one of the most consequential lawsuits in the history of modern American media, it's also probably the strangest. In 2016, Hulk Hogan, the professional wrestler, won a nine-figure lawsuit that ultimately bankrupted Gawker Media, a fleet of sites that epitomized the barbed brilliance of New York's young media crowd. The lawsuit concerned a video of Hogan, nay Terry Jane Balea, having consensual sex with his best friend's wife while that same friend recorded the encounter, secretly, according to Hogan and later reporting. Behind the scenes of this tawdry affair, a more shocking story was playing out in which Peter Thiel, the billionaire investor, seemed to be exercising a deep grudge against Gawker by bankrolling Hogan's lawsuit to destroy the media company that published the sex tape. This saga is the subject of a new book by the author and controversial media strategist Ryan Holiday called Conspiracy, Peter Thiel, Hulk Hogan, Gawker, and the Anatomy of Intrigue. Shortly after the verdict, both Thiel and Gawker's founder, Nick Denton, reached out to Holiday about his coverage of the lawsuit in the New York Observer. Over the next two years, Holiday returned that excess into the first reported book that chronicles the lawsuit from the offending blog post that sparked Thiel's wrath to the afternoon of Gawker's sale. In the book's biggest revelation, Holiday reports for the first time that a 20-something acquaintance of Thiel's, identified only as Mr. A, not only came up with the idea in April 2011, before the publication of the Hogan video, to target Gawker through an open-ended legal fund, but also spearheaded the plot to take down Gawker's using Thiel's money. So yeah, I mean, th this is, and uh, I'll, I'll post the links in the video description, but you know, th this runs pretty deep, gets pretty complicated. And uh, you know, again, uh, from 2018, because the... Uh, Atlantic.com article was from February last year, and this one was from June. Uh, it says, Charles Harder, the lawyer who brought down Gawker, may have played fast and loose with legal ethics in that case. He now represents Donald Trump against Stormy Daniels. So, uh, yeah. It says, uh, Caligula Trump, I, I refuse to call that boy a president. Uh, he's a dictator, just like Obama and George W. Bush, you know, just... I'll give you an idea of my politics. I don't like either major party. Um, but anyway, uh, Caligula Trump has always been infuri infuriated by bad press and never more than when he learned of last January's impending publication of Michael Wolff's Fire and Fury inside the Trump White House, which is full of lies and half-truths, but uh, 
we won't go there. Because, uh, you know, when you've got uh, cart-carrying liars uh, telling all about other cart-carrying liars, uh, it's kind of difficult to to believe half of what's being written. Uh, because, yeah, some of it might be true, but, you know, the other portion of it is unmitigated bullshit. And for the most selfish of reasons, not for any public service. But, uh, yeah, I'm uh, getting distracted here. So let me just... Uh, yeah, so uh, skip down. All right, so so yeah, e e yeah, so yeah, it goes uh goes down to uh Drumpf trying to prevent the publication of the book, but his choice of counsel was not Michael Cohen who's currently facing additional perjury before Congress charges. <laughs> Or Rudy Giuliani. No, it was Charles Harder, a Los Angeles attorney who made his bones bringing media companies to their knees. A year earlier, Harder had been the lead plaintiff's attorney in a spectacular lawsuit brought by Hulk Hogan against Gawker Media, which resulted in a massive verdict that propelled Gawker into bankruptcy. Surely aware of Harder's success, Trump also retained him in the Stormy Daniels litigation. Even so, the dictator would not have known the full story of the Gawker case, which only became public with the recent release of Ryan Holiday's fascinating book, Conspiracy, Peter Thiel, Hulk Hogan, Gawker, and the Anatomy, yeah, Anatomy of Intrigue. I can't talk today. When Hulk Hogan sued Gawker Media for invasion of privacy, it first seemed like a battle of loudmouths with nothing much at stake other than entertainment value. Hogan, real name Terry Bollea, was a retired professional wrestler who had become famous for flexing his muscles in center ring, shredding his ripped t-shirt, and occasionally touting his sexual abilities in promotions and interviews. Gawker.com was a gossip-heavy and highly profitable website, among several others operated by Gawker Media. Best known for a prurient obsession with celebrities and willingness to publish almost anything that would attract clicks and page views. The issue in the case was Gawker.com's publication of a short clip from a secretly recorded video in which Hogan was shown having sex with his best friend's wife. The trial, which ended in March 2017, resulted in a staggering $140 million verdict against Gawker Media and its founder, Nick Denton. Hogan eventually settled for $31 million and Gawker Media filed for bankruptcy, which appeared to be the end of the matter. There was a lot more to it than that, however, as Holiday explains in profound detail. More than just a courtroom soap opera, Bollea vs. Gawker Media provides significant inf insights about the role of financial power in litigation and not, coincidentally, the legal ethics of Trump's lawyer, Charles Harder, and it uh, and the rest of it goes into detail about how uh, you know, it seems like Peter Thiel and several others were basically looking for anything they could use to take down Gawker Media, and Hulk Hogan provided the uh, all too willing assistance there. I was a real horse's ass. Yeah, you don't know the half of it, Terry. Yeah. Yeah, fucking scumbag. So, not only do we have a, a, an unapologetic and insincerely so, uh, or I, I should say insincere uh, apology giving horse's ass, uh, but, you know, he, he's a blatant racist and a, a scumbag who sleeps with his best friend's wife while... You know, thinking he's being clever and going behind his back. Well, it turns out, no, no, Bubba, the love sponge, a popular radio personality in his own right, or in his own mind, take your pick, uh, was a bit smarter and made some visual and audio evidence because, guess what? You were screwing his wife. Look, man, I made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, you did, big time. So, uh, yeah, th this is, you know, pretty interesting because as, you know, as Todd Phillips goes into directing a Hulk Hogan biopic, are we going to see any of this? No, because they're only focusing on Hulk Hogan's early career during the 80s and presumably the early 90s but they're not going to focus on his scumbaggery in the 21st century. 
which I think is a mistake, you know, uh, uh, and, you know, I, I'm someone who actually was dismayed when uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, who uh, plays Borat and other characters, uh, including Ali G, uh, wanted to do a, a tabloid style tell all about Freddie Mercury, which, you know, the band surviving band members and Queen didn't want him to do. And, you know, good thing they parted ways because the uh, biopic that did get released starring Remy Malik as Freddie Mercury, uh, yeah, it, it did pretty well. And uh, not only that, also gained significant uh, awards. So, yeah. But this one, uh, th th it's like they're whitewashing Hulk Hogan. And that, I think, is a mistake. Because you were glossing over some things that I think very much are in the public interest. With Freddie Mercury, yeah, he made a lot of mistakes himself. He slept around. He didn't take the proper precautions. He didn't uh, apparently wear condoms or use them properly if he did. Uh, he was obviously rather indiscriminate in whether he slept with uh, people who were disease-free or not, uh, you know, I, I mean, granted, you can say, okay, yeah, it was a different time and nobody really thought about that. And this was before AIDS was widely known, but still, e even before HIV became a, a, a prominent part of the headlines, you know, you, you have, you have to understand there were other STDs that could very well have been spread uh, gonorrhea, syphilis, you know, all, all sorts of other stuff. But, you know, that that's something that affects more people than just Freddie Mercury, okay? And, you know, people make boneheaded mistakes in their private lives. And, you know, while it might have benefited someone for Mercury to actually talk about his experiences and maybe try and warn people, you know, not to make the mistakes he did, but they were still very much a part of his private life. And his mistakes really didn't harm anyone beyond himself. But with Hulk Hogan, what he took part in was not only did he betray the trust of his friend, not only did he violate the sanctity of his marriage, but he also willingly took part in an attempt to bring down a news publication, you know, however tabloidy you might think of it as having been, it was still a news publication. And what Peter Thiel did with Hogan's help was to essentially punish a news publication for revealing an embarrassing uh, and really scumbaggy thing that a sub uh, public figure had engaged in. And that should frighten a lot of people, because if news publications are afraid to publish the truth, if they're afraid to call people out on lies, if they're afraid to report on things that are at best unethical and at worst downright criminal for fear of being sued, you know, which the First Amendment is supposed to protect that, uh, then, you know, that, that, that makes all news... Uh, publications, subject to the whims of uh, governments, of deep-pocketed interests, and so all they end up reporting is fluff. And that's, you know, obviously a bad thing, because if you don't know what uh, the people whose salaries you're paying with your tax dollars are doing it with those tax dollars in your name, you know, that's a problem. Because they could be, in fact, most of them are, doing things with your tax dollars that uh, you probably don't want them doing, and which have impacts that are both direct and indirect, and also quite massive. For example, uh, you know, the people who are stacking regulatory agencies, including the Environmental Protection Agencies, with 
uh, corporate stooges who then turn around and refuse to do their jobs of actually regulating uh, polluters. That's a problem because, you know, polluters keep poisoning the air we breathe, the ground we grow our food in, the water we drink, and get away with it because the agencies that are supposed to be protecting us aren't doing their jobs because they've been hijacked by people who would just assume those agencies go away. But you pay for those agencies. You have every right to know, you know, what's going on. So, you know, just, stuff like this is why this is important. And that we're not going to be seeing any of it in the Hulk Hogan biopic should be uh, quite disturbing. And it should actually spark demands to tell the whole story about just what a scumbag Hulk Hogan really is. So, uh, you know, and if nothing else, you know, maybe it should inspire someone to do a documentary or maybe uh, do another, uh, an unauthorized biopic that says, you know, look, this, you know, focus on this Gawker trial because, you know, th this shows just what an asshole Hulk Hogan is as a public figure you know, when he thinks no one is looking. You know, I mean, I, I would definitely pay money to go see such a, a movie because, uh, you know, this, you know, is important for people to know. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments section. If you've liked what you've heard and you want to hear more, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to receive notifications whenever we upload new content. And if you want to help support the channel, improve the quality of the podcast, uh, help us diversify our content. Uh, consider becoming a patron or subscribe star subscriber uh, get the rewards listed in the side columns let's do it yeah yeah thanks Hulk yeah go away next time we'll get the rest you stupid fools uh, what are you talking about Hulk you can't do this you work for me well, I don't work for you Hulk go away what the hell is wrong with you you, you are what's wrong with me. Shut up, go away. All right, yeah. Anyway, where was I? Yes, this is like a Wilk for the Wilk Report saying, take care, good night, I'm out of here.